Okay, well, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to our introduction to assistive technology webinar. I am Laura Martinez. I am the assistive technology program manager at TASC. And I am joined by... Good morning. I'm Elizabeth Ortega, assistive technology coordinator at TASC. And welcome to introduction to assistive technology. I'm going to let um tell you a little bit about us. Um, TAS is a nonprofit. We serve six counties in Southern California. We are a parent training information center and a family empowerment center. We educate and empower people with disabilities and their families to become effective communicators and self-advocates. Our disclaimers that task staff are not advocates or attorneys. We do not provide recommendations, legal advice, or suggestions. Our family support specialists offer peer-to-peer -peer support, information, and options to parents of children with disabilities so they can become informed members of the IEP team and work collaboratively with schools. Our family support specialists help families understand the special education process by providing one-on-one -on -one phone consultations virtual IEP consultations and review of documentations. Um, they help with letter writing. They offer a variety of educational webinars, support for military families, information and resources. Within our tech center, we offer a variety of assistive technology webinars, individualized online lab appointments. If you're looking for specific apps, extensions, websites, any um, AT, we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment and we can show you what we have, what we know in the areas that you're looking for. We also offer AT consultations in clinics under our AAC services. AAC is Augmentative and Alternative Communication. We have Project Communicate in which we offer a free one-hour AAC consultation with a speech-language pathologist. If you're interested or would like more information on the one hour consultation, you can contact me and you'll have our email addresses in a bit. We also have Let's Talk AAC, which is a webinar series. It's a total of four webinars and you can find those recordings on our YouTube channel. Tech Connection is our online social and life skill groups for ages 14 and above. And we have a lot of information and resources in assistive technology. And once again, feel free to contact us if you're looking for specific uh, assistive technology or you have specific questions pertaining to your child or client, you can either email Laura or myself and our email address is on the slide. Tech Tibbet is our assistive technology focused e-newsletter. goes out once a month. If you're not receiving and would like to receive it, please visit the website on the slide plug in your name, email address, and your start receiving it the following month. And before Laura continues, begins, um, I do want to let you know that you will receive a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. I will email it to you after the presentation to the email address you use to register to today's webinar. Thank you, Liz. Okay, so what is assistive technology? Assistive technology can be many things um, from a piece of Velcro all the way up to a, an expensive eye gaze device and everything in between. So we just have some examples here to give you an idea and we will be walking through the basics, excuse me, to introduce you to uh, what types of things are out there. So, an assistive technology device or devices are identified in the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act of 2004 as the following. Any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired commercially off the shelf, modified or customized, that's used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of children with disabilities. 
And the term does not include a medical device that's surgically implanted or the replacement of such a device. And then there's the code, the ed code there. So when we're talking about assistive technology, a device, the term is very broad. So although the IDEA uses the term device, it's important um, to recognize that AT or assistive technology devices required by students with disabilities, it can be hardware, software, apps, as well as standalone devices. And we'll go through and show you some examples in a bit. So almost any tool that can be considered assistive technology, uh, except for, again, for those uh, items that are surgically implanted, like a cochlear, um, uh, qualify as assistive technology. And we'll get um, more into that in just a little bit. So here are just a tiny bit of the things that assistive technology can do for our students. So it might be something that makes things easier to turn on. It might be an adapted uh, knob or a switch or, um, gosh, there are so many things. Uh, it could be something that holds something steady or in place. It could be as simple as putting non-slip surface, non-slip pad under a keyboard or under a device. Um, getting dressed, helping a student learn, which will show you some educational aids in just a little bit. Um, recreational activities, uh, allowing or improving communication, that's a big one, and we'll get into augmentative communication. Um, help a student see or hear better, or help a student control things, such as a television, a radio, computer, lights, uh, you name it. So assistive technology is an umbrella term, hence my visual here. So assistive technology is kind of all encompassing. And when we talk about assistive technology, there are um, five basic categories that fall under that umbrella in no particular order. So we can be talking about physical. Um, so a physical disability. So you might need Aids for daily living, which we'll show you some of those. It might be accessing your computer or your tablet device. Uh, it might have to do with mobility or seating. Educational learning aids. We um, in, at TASC in our tech center deal with these, uh, help people with these a lot. So it might be low tech supports. I'm gonna show you a bunch of those might be a handheld device like a calculator, uh, could be software or specialized applications. Um, we happen to have over 3,300 specialized applications. So there's a lot of uh, help out there and I'll give you some examples in a bit. It might fall under the hearing category, which could include, th include things like closed captioning, telecommunications, things like texting or chat, um, and assistive listening devices. Vision supports might be low tech supports, um, software and apps, there are a ton out there. Uh, it might be a braille device or things that help with that. Communication slash AAC or augmentative alternative communication. It can be something simple like a picture board, a talking photo album, uh, to a dedicated speech generating device, or might be an iPad or a tablet with an AAC app on it. So there are all kinds of things out there and we will definitely uh, show you some examples and give you some resources for that. So when we talk about assistive technology, there's a continuum, meaning there are low tech or light tech, I like to say light tech, uh, mid tech and high tech items. So under low tech, you might have simple things like pencil grips, uh, raised line paper. We're gonna show you some different kinds of paper, something like a slant board to help with writing, 
adaptive eating utensils. So those are all kind of in the low tech or light tech category. Under mid tech, you might have a talking spell checker, a switch operated toy or a calculator. And under high tech, we're talking screen readers for someone who is visually impaired, environmental control devices, and augmentative communication devices, and much more than that. And when you're looking at assistive technology for a student or a client, it's not a, a one and done magic wand type solution. Uh, often you have, um, if, even if you have a high tech device, you need a low tech device for backup or to do something else. So there's that whole continuum there. So I'm going to start with just some examples of low tech. So we have things like pencil grips. There are all different shapes and sizes and the best way um, to find out what works is to try different things. So different shapes. This one has texture. I love these. These have great uh, sensory feedback. So whatever helps the, the person who's using it uh, with that correct writing grasp, This one, you stick your two fingers and your thumb in the little slots. So there's all different kinds. Pencil grips. Magnifying bars. So these can be useful to help with tracking, visual tracking when you're trying to read so you don't skip lines when you're reading. It also magnifies and highlights, which is really helpful. I use these myself. Um, I find it helpful, the magnification and the highlighting for tracking. Reading helpers. So this is called the slide reader. And with the slide reader, you um, put it on whatever you're reading, a book or a, um, a page, and you pull this little grip here, this little, it's the cardboard, and you can pull it and it reveals one word at a time. And it also helps uh, you stay on the, the right line. There we go. There's an example. So it blocks out the other lines and helps you focus. Um, reading helpers, they come in all different colors. Some people see better through different colors, whatever makes it um, more comfortable for you to read. This is a whole page of a colored, a colored. It's like colored acetate, for lack of a better word. Some some see people see like myself see better in color, uh, rather than that bright white page that can be have a glare. This is another one. This is. Uh, does the reverse, it blocks out with the color and then you have the um, see-through strip to read through. Here's some more different colored ones. Again, with the reading helpers, we um, typically have someone try all different colors and see uh, what is easiest on their eyes. And I will have, um, at the end of each section, I have resources on where to get all of these things. So special scissors. Sometimes it's really hard for people with motor um, issues to um, both squeeze and pull open the scissors. So a lot of these special scissors, you just have to squeeze and they bounce back on their own and they can be easier to control. They come in different sizes. They have scissors for right and left hands um, that are helpful. This one you can actually, um, you just press it and it cuts and you can actually um, grip it, vice grip it to the desk and move the paper. So a student with motoric issues can um, 
use it that way. Pens and pencils, my goodness, I'm gonna go back. So there's all different types of pencils. And um, if your child has been to OT, you've probably seen them use this, the shorter or the um, the larger pencils with triangle grips or different, different um, shapes. So here's just a few. There's this one. This one is triangle shaped and it has little bumps for grip. This is um, my personal favorite. This is called the twist and write and it's ergonomic. Just put your finger through. Um, very easy to grasp and control. And then the sides here are erasers. These are fidget pencils, which is nice if you have someone who needs who benefits from fidgeting or moving, um, they come like this on the pencil, but once the pencil is sharpened all the way down, you can pull them off and put them on another pencil, which is nice. So they're reusable. Uh, smencils, for people who like the olfactory or need that olfactory input, these are great. Weights that you can put on your pencil. So here, this is a weight. Uh, with little stoppers here, and then they also have the pencil grip of their choice. This is um, the equivalent of a weighted pencil. They have them in different sizes, and you use this little tool to, to tighten it, and it's also the grip, so it can make it the pencil wider or thicker as well. Here's an example of how you might do it yourself or try it. Um, to see if it would work for your student. Uh, this is from the therapy shop and it's in our, our resources, but it's like a bean bag. So you have textures on all, all of these, um, the puffy part here. And there's little, it's thicker than sand, but smaller than like a BB. And it, the Velcro, it wraps around any writing utensil and it has the heaviness of the weight, but also has the sensory feedback. Here is an um, example of a pen that stays uh, flat on the desk for those that have uh, tremors or motor control, and you can hold it different ways and it assists so you don't have to actually hold the pencil. This is the Evo pen, it's an ergonomic pen. It's very short and small and easy to control depending on your student. This is the ring pen. You can stick your finger through and write with it. It helps if you, you know, drop things and it's easy, pretty easy to control. So here are a few of our um, old, I, was, I would say our um, old faithful <laughs> type um, examples that we use a lot. The first one is called the handy writer. And I would equate it to like a hair band, a hair tie with just a little knot on the top. But what you do is you put your whole hand through the larger part and then you put your pencil through the loop on the top and then they have different things. Ours have dolphins. You put them um, between your, you put them in your palm and you close your two bottom fingers. And what that does is help with grip. You have um, kind of a tightness for pullback and it does help with that grip. Now, if you don't have one of those, you can do the same thing with a rubber band or a hair tie. Just twist it once to make the loop. And anything in, in your palm under those two fingers, a pen cap, a cotton ball, a quarter, whatever you have, um, and that'll help with your writing grip. This is the writing bird. This has been around for a long time and you can put pencil, pen, whatever writing utensil in it, you tighten it and it's meant to stay on the desk or the surface and help those that have um, bigger motoric issues with writing and to stay steady. On the bottom here, we have the Arthrider, which was made for folks with arthritis, but it also works great for um, people with other uh, grasp issues. And it's just a big plastic 
ball that you put your writing utensil through and you tighten it up. And um, I've seen back in the old days, I've seen tennis balls used or um, styrofoam balls. If you can, you know, the styrofoam spears, if you can stand the, the way those feel, um, have the same type of help assistance. So adapted books. So sometimes we have kiddos or people that have trouble turning pages in the book. Sometimes it's hard to get your finger in there to turn the page. So these are just some examples of some that we adapted. We put um, pom-poms in between. I like to do this with the hard back books because it's easier to turn. And so what it does is make space between the pages. So you're easy, it's easier to get your finger in there or a pencil or whatever you're using to um, turn the pages. Here's one with popsicle sticks. This one I thought was really interesting. Somebody did it with contact lens cases and then they also use pom-poms. So they have something to grasp, but there's still um, space between the pages. This one was done with tongue depressors and numbered. This one is sponges. Specialized paper. So there's all kinds of specialized paper out there that you can buy, but it does tend to be on the expensive side. And before you figure out like what works for each um, kiddo, it's nice to have um, samples or examples to try different ones to see what works. So some of them have different uh, spacing, different lines. This one has, so you can put one letter per box. This is the stop and go paper. So just different kinds of specialized paper. And so we gave you some um, resources to print it out for free to try different ones to see what might work. So I've included resources after each section, excuse me, so that you can um, peruse and see where to get the different, uh, different type of things. And if you have questions, you're always welcome to um, ask them in the chat or email Liz or myself. So some free printable writing papers so you can print, and print it out and try different things. So fidgets and sensory items, we use these a lot. So when you're talking about a fidget or a sensory item, there are all different kinds out there. And it's so different for each person, what kind of feedback, what kind of sensory feedback they need or they're looking for, whether it's for anxiety, for um, ADHD, for um, to help with concentration. There's lots of studies that shows if you have something in your hand, a lot of folks, it's easier to concentrate, to listen, and do things. Obviously, it has to be in the right situation. Um, so we just have some examples here. These are click tracks. They just kind of click. These are great. They're um, pen pencil toppers, and they're chewable. They're made um, specifically to chew, so they won't harm the teeth. Uh, here are some uh, chewable jewelry. They have necklaces, bracelets, um, all kind of pendants, all kinds of things. This is a tea bar that's chewable and they're all made to not injure teeth. Uh, this is a tangle toy. We have a lot of these. Um, they're very nice, uh, good size. They don't make a lot of noise. Um, they're a nice fidget. And then if you have younger children, they have larger tangle toys. Um, simple koosh ball. These little items are stretchable. This is called a fidget pod and it just sits on your desk and you can just run your hand over it or squeeze it depending on what you want. Putty. This happens to be crazy Aaron's thinking putty because I love it. Um, as you play with it, 
or as you use it, it gets softer and it changes color, which is really neat. Uh, they also have scented uh, putty as well. And then um, this, so this is basically a balance cushion or a cushion that goes, um, that's used for exercise. But we have found if you put these in a student's chair or a person's chair, someone that's fidgety or needs that feedback, sometimes this helps. So you can uh, adjust the amount of air you put in and um, there are different textures, different bumpiness that you can put on. And sometimes that helps with that sensory feedback with calming, excuse me. So I just put some resources in here. Of course, there are many more, but these are ones that we use often um, for chewy items and for fidget items. And then I included a link to a, an online fidget spinner. That's fun. Do we have any questions up to this point? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go on to, um, gosh, apps and software. There's so many things out there. And then we also have, you know, Google Chrome extensions and um, websites, just so many things out there. And if you're not familiar, we do offer a huge menu of assistive technology webinars that go over many of these topics. But again, as Liz mentioned, you're always welcome to make a, an appointment if you're looking for something specific. So there's a lot of software and specialized applications out there that will work for just about anybody. Um, uh, you know, it could be a learning or physical or a visual impairment. And there are so many topics. I just included some reading, writing, math, life skills, social skills. There's just so much more. So I just wanted to give you um, a couple examples so you could get an idea of how, um, how rich some of these apps are. So the first one is called the Dolphin Easy Reader app. And I do like this one because it's my favorite, you know, price. It's free. And it is available on multiple platforms. So iOS, Amazon, Google Play, even on your Windows PC. So I'm going to show you a quick video. I hope. Low vision. Blind or dyslexic? Access your favorite libraries with the free Easy Reader app. Browse for a new bestseller or search for an old favorite. Follow along with perfectly synchronized text. It was the best time of day, the July sky cloudless. Change the text size, pick a color, add a highlight, or tweak the speed. The July sky cloudless, the slowly setting sun, a spotlight on the east. Get your newspapers delivered direct. Or copy and paste text from anywhere and Easy Reader will read it. Los Angeles is a sprawling Southern California city and the center of the nation's film and television industry. Download Easy Reader from the App Store now. Easy Reader, a better way to read. Okay, so that's Easy Reader, and that's just a taste of what it does. Um, it's really highly customizable. And again, you can change background, foreground, voices, colors, font, enlarge text. It's just um, super helpful. Uh, another one, just I wanted to give uh, an idea of what's out there. This one is called SnapType. And SnapType is free, or you can upgrade to the Pro version, which is $4.99. It's available on iOS and Google Play. And what this does is for people who have trouble with writing on worksheets and things like that, you can import documents and um, type directly on those documents.
So while I was in school for occupational therapy, uh, I met a little boy during my field work and he had dysgraphia, which is a handwriting disability, where he can't really read his own handwriting and his handwriting is really messy. I hate homework! So I was thinking, how can I think of something to help this child? So what I thought about was why not just take a picture of the worksheet that the teacher passed out to him, and then he can just directly type on the screen. That's what SnapType does, and there wasn't anything out there that really did what I wanted it to. I had originally made this for this one child, and after knowing that it helped him so much, I thought there has to be other children out there just like him. This is fun! It's a very intuitive app, so I feel like you can get on it and you can figure out how to use it very quickly, which is really important with kids because if it's so complex, you're not going to be able to use it. I just pull out my phone and be like, oh, I'll show you how to use it. So, or I let them try to use it and then they realize how easy it is. So that's just a quick glimpse of snap type. It also has the ability if you need to circle and draw, you can do that. There's a, a lots of features um, if you upgrade to the Pro as well. So there are tons of math apps out there, but I wanted to show you this one because it's unique in what it does. And so basically what it does is you can um, type any problems directly on here or import import problems as well or sheets as well but um, it makes it easier to line up and stay um, in your spaces and makes it legible I'll just show you the video and you can get Hi, my name's Henry. I have dyslexia and dysgraphia. Frank out is panic under control. You've probably heard of dyslexia. It makes reading hard. Dysgraphia is like that, but it makes writing really hard. Dysgraphia makes my handwriting pretty hard to read. I use voice recognition software instead of writing. But there is no voice recognition software for doing math. And when you can't write a math problem, you can't solve a math problem. So my parents and I created an app called ModMath. It's a free app for anyone who needs it. ModMath turns the iPad into touchscreen math scratch paper. So I can do math homework without ever using a pencil or paper. Long division, multiplication problems, even fractions. And two years later, ModMath has been completely redesigned to handle algebra. Variables, square roots, exponents, and more. Plus, you can share your math homework any way you like. Text, email, print, even save it to Dropbox. ModMath is available for Android and Chromebook. So that's ModMath. I just wanted to give you an idea. Of course, there are so many different types of apps um, out there and different types of, of software. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the types of things that are out there. So AAC, Augmentative and Alternative Communication. So this is the definition from ASHA, which is the American Speech Language Hearing Association. Augmentative and Alternative Communication, or AAC, includes all forms of communication other than oral speech that are used to express thoughts, needs, wants, and ideas. And we use AAC every day um, when we use our facial expressions, gestures, or use symbols or pictures, or even when we're writing. So I'm gonna start with low or light tech AAC. And again, if you're interested in any of these specific subjects, we do have um, webinars that go into more depth or you're welcome to make an appointment. So AAC can include um, different things like letter boards, picture books, uh, PECs or the picture exchange system, 
So I'm just going to scroll through a, a few so you can see. So in this one, they pull off symbols and make a sentence. This is a PEC system. This is like a flip and talk. You find the um, category you're looking for and flip and there's choices. And we always include a keyboard if we can, because um, all your words are not always gonna be there. So this is like a talk, not a talking photo album. This is just like a, a communication book. There's pod. These are different topic specific boards. You could probably guess what this one is for. So we're doing Play-Doh. There's another one just to give you an example of the difference. Cooking vocabulary. So different activity based boards. This one is for a visual for calm down strategies. This one is great. It's a healthcare communication board. Um, I believe these should be in all um, doctor's offices and hospitals. There is a pain scale um, and different things. And then when you flip it over, there's even more. This is a simple communication um, board, but you do have your full keyboard and questions. This is an one that's in alphabetical order, but if you'll notice the um, numbers on the side, this was meant for scanning for someone who um, uh, maybe has a lot of trouble um, for partner assisted scanning, sorry. Um, so I could go through and I could say number one, number two, yes. And then I would go G, no, yes. Okay, H, H, and then I'd start over again and we'd spell out a word. This here, before I forget, is a communication bracelet, which is great. It's got um, frequently used words and it's just a snap bracelet that can go on um, the wrist. So that was just some on the low tech end or light tech. Um, AAC can also include mid tech. And mid tech is usually something that has voice output. It's usually run off of batteries. And that could be single switch, single level, or multi level devices. They typically have what we call static display, meaning you have to replace the visuals yourself um, by printing them out on paper or cardstock, depending on what they are. So different multi-button units, single button units. Some of the single button units are multi-step. So if you hit it once, it says something. If you hit it two times, it says something else and so on. Um, these have the um, capability of putting an actual object to match whatever it is so they can get the, that the object is the same thing as what's on the picture card. And then, um, this one is, it's right at the high end of mid-tech, and this actually scans, so it lights up and says what the things are for someone who has a visual impairment, and then they can select what it is by hooking up a larger switch, which is nice. Um, here's some uh, mid-tech example, which is a GoTalk. We have used these a lot over the years. So there's different sizes of GoTalk. There's a four plus, a 20 plus. What we like about these is they're very easy to program um, and they have the directions glued right on the back, which I find helpful, especially since we have so many devices and things. Um, again, it has that uh, static display that you have to replace, whoops. And I think we have a video just to give you an example or an idea of, of what you can do.
This is the GoTalk 20 Plus Augmentative and Alternative Communication Device. A simple yet very helpful device. Let me show you how it works. Let's start by turning the GoTalk around. On the back, you have an on and off switch, a record button, and an erase button. Turning it back over, you have your level switcher and your volume control. Using the level switcher, you can cycle between 5 pages of 25 recorded messages for a total of 125 pre-recorded messages. These are the volume buttons, volume up and volume down. To activate one of the pre-recorded messages, yeah. simply press on one of the large message squares on the keycard. The overlays are stored inside and slide in and out very easily. Pictures for overlays can be printed from offline or words can simply be written on a piece of paper and slid inside. Record a new message, simply press the record button on the back of the device. A red light will shine on the front, telling you that it's in record mode. Switch to your level, then press on the speech blurb that you want to record on. Once it's pressed, the red light will begin flashing, letting you know that it's recording. Simply press the record button on the back again to finish the recording. The GoTalk is a great communication device for people who have limited speech, people who have had strokes, have autism, and many more. Just to give you an idea of what's out there. So AAC can also include high tech, which is probably what you see the most if you know someone who uses uh, augmentative and alternative communication. So these can be dedicated communication devices and they do have synthesized or computerized speech. Um, can be a computer with speech output, an iPad or Android tablet with AAC applications on them. So here are some different examples. Um, these are dedicated communication devices. In other words, they're just meant, not just, they're meant for communication and that's their main focus. They usually have a lot of um, customization ability and um, they come in different shapes and sizes. Here's another one. Um, there are so many AAC apps out there, um, but I would just wanted to show you one so you can get an idea of um, how the display is dynamic, meaning it changes as you push one button, it opens another folder and so on. My people, my friends, Max. My spaces. Word spaces. Actions. Sabrina. Eat. My spaces, my food and dr food and drinks. Lunch. Spaghetti. You want to you want to tell everybody what Kayla? So, um, you saw how quickly uh, he navigated all of those folders to get to um, his what he wanted for lunch, which was spaghetti. So resources, this one was hard to narrow down. So I included um, probably the most common AAC device vendors, but there are so many out there. And then the same with AAC app vendors. Again, there are just so many out there, which is why it's important to get um, an assessment, which we'll talk about in a bit, um, to know what's right for each person. There are so many language systems involved and, and uh, motor, motor planning and different things that it's really important um, that you get an assessment by someone who uh, knows AAC or whatever um, you're getting the assessment in. Alternative access. So what this is, 
basically it allows alternative input devices um, so people can control their computers, their iPads or different devices through means other than a typical standard keyboard or mouse or a typical mouse. Um, so just some examples might be head pointing, eye movement, um, eye tracking systems, different switches, touch screens, joysticks, trackballs. Um, so I just have an example here. This is a switch adapted toy. And um, now someone can just use that switch to turn the toy. They hold the switch down, the toy moves. They take their hand off the switch, the toy stops. Um, this is a one button mouse, which is super helpful for um, younger children or people that have, uh, that struggle trying to get the mouse to where they want to point and then accidentally hit that right click button. It can be frustrating. So the one button mouse just eliminates the right click button and the right click features. Uh, an adapted joystick. So you have um, different buttons to um, click, drag, right click, you know, those different things. Some switches here. This is a um, head mouse. And with the head mouse, you put a reflective dot somewhere on your, I usually do between the eyes, but you can do it on your nose or wherever. And that reflective dot reflects into that camera and there anywhere you turn, that's where your um, pointer goes. And then you can either hit a switch or set up um, what's called dwell, where if I stay on one spot for you know, five seconds, it will automatically click for me. And then there are just tons of different adaptive keyboards with larger keys or um, keys that are easier to see. Uh, it, it just depends what you're looking for. There are tons. Aids for daily living. So these are really important um, just in life. And these can include many, many things, things like adaptive eating utensils. Um, I have a universal cuff here, an example, and that can hold a spoon, a fork, a toothbrush, depending on how it's placed, um, a pen, a pencil, a paintbrush. Um, and that can help. Again, you have to move it place it differently. Um, simple things like adapted puzzles that have larger handles, so they're easy to access. Um, you can also talk about adaptive dressing devices like this. This helps close a button. They also have zipper pulls, things like that. Um, specially designed uh, toilet seats. Sometimes they're higher, so they're easier to um, get on and off of, um, of course, restroom modifications, uh, different aids for grooming. Uh, there are robotic and electronic feeders that are amazing. Um, there are adaptive, a lot of adaptive cooking tools. Um, and then of course, environmental control units like um, this here, I'm not gonna say the name because mine will respond. Um, but there are also really cool watches. So this one is for diabetes and it can um, measure blood sugar. They have all kinds of different watches that vibrate and uh, have reminders and do things that help during the day. And then this is an adapted door handle. And it just slips right over a regular doorknob, which makes it easier to open and close. Here are some resources for adaptive equipment vendors and aids for daily living. So um, on to assistive technology for hearing and vision. Um, I listed just a few things under each category, but there are so many. So for hearing impaired, uh, deaf, or, deaf or hard of hearing individuals, uh, technology typically falls under one of these three categories. One is telecommunications, which is huge. So different adaptive phones, you know, um, can be closed captioning, texting, things like that. Assistive li listening devices, 
which are helpful. Um, I have a video and then alerting devices. So up here you see a, uh, a clock that has a bed shaker. So you put that under your pillow and it vibrates and shakes the bed. Um, so I'm gonna show you, this is actually a video from a vendor, but it had such a good um, variety. I wanted to show you. Gosh. <laughs> Let's take a look at our personal amplifiers. Personal amplifiers help you hear better in a variety of settings, like loud restaurants or in the car. Use them with headphones or earbuds, or with a neck loop to supplement T-coil equipped hearing aids. If you can't hear your pastor or instructor, check out our personal FM listening systems. Our amplified and captioned phones let you enjoy the phone again. You can even adjust tone if you have trouble hearing certain voices. Captioned phones are only $75 and include free captioning. TV listening systems let you watch your favorite shows without blasting everyone away. Many use Bluetooth or radio frequency, so you can run to the fridge without missing a word. Our alerting products keep you posted to phone calls, texts, and FaceTime requests, as well as doorbells or knocks, open windows and doors, kitchen timers, and baby cries. They may even save your life by alerting you to smoke and carbon monoxide alarms and weather sirens. If you can't hear your alarm clock, we can wake you with a gentle vibrating wristwatch or a blaring bed shaking alarm clock with flashing lights. We also offer tinnitus masters to drown out that ringing in your ears as well as elder care products and books and media about hearing loss and deaf culture. Learn more at hearinglossexperts.com I just wanted to show you there's such a wide variety of things that can be um, helpful. So for vision accommodations, there are so many things out there, software and apps. Of course, there's software um, like JAWS, which is jobs, job access with speech, that is a, a screen reader that will read everything aloud so you know where your icons are and you can read your uh, documents and email. There are um, magnifying devices, you know, handheld magnifiers and devices. There are all kinds of aids for daily living like we looked at before, but for people um, that are blind or have uh, low vision, they have, um, just for example, they have um, large playing cards. They have um, Braille, Rubik's Cubes, and puzzles. Uh, this here, this pen, the Bold Writer, is really helpful for someone with low vision. It's like a Sharpie, but it doesn't have that horrible Sharpie smell. And um, we, I have a friend that uses it, uses them a lot. And, you know, you, we, line where she needs to put her signature. We line uh, her signature on her checks and things like that. And it's been really helpful. There are lots of different low tech items. Um, and then of course, canes and things like that. I just wanted to show you one more video of a handheld magnifier. magnifier. Called the Amigo.
Anyway, so that's just one example. Another thing you could do for, um, sorry about that, for um, magnifying is uh, the camera on your phone. You can take a picture of something and enlarge it. You can, um, there's different apps that have magnifier, magnifying quality, can change the back, the invert the colors and things like that. So there's all kinds of things out there that can help. Uh, I included a few resources, but of course there are many more. And then just, I always wanna note that an AT evaluation should be done through your school district or other entity, depending on the AT user's age and situation. And during that evaluation, the assessor will match the technology to the individual user by trying out different options. And the way this can be done, especially if you are a parent looking for an assessment through your school district or whatever entity, is to be very specific when somebody says, I want an AT assessment, we saw all those categories there. Um, it can mean different things to different people. So if you're asking your OT, they're gonna think about motor type things. Um, if you're asking your speech language pathologist, they're gonna be thinking about communication. So um, being very specific in what you ask for is super important. We do have sample letters that we can send you if you email us and you're interested or you want to know um, more about that assessment process. But um, being specific in what you're looking for and obviously tying um, that to your IEP goals is um, going to help. So after they do the assessment, they try different things. Uh, um, they're going to recommend certain assistive technologies. And um, once that, it, the, whatever the assistive technology is that's recommended, training will be necessary for the child, for the parent, and school personnel or anyone that's in their uh, daily life. So it's really important that they consider different types of technology, try them out with the individual and then Im implement them. So the second part of the federal definition that we saw, the idea uh, definition that we saw, uh, we saw assistive technology device, but they also have, uh, the second part is defining the assistive technology service. So it can be any service that directly assists a child with a disability in selecting, acquiring, or using an assistive technology device. And then these are all the different things. So the evaluation is a huge part. Purchasing, leasing, renting, acquiring uh, the devices, uh, selecting, designing, fitting, customizing, adapting, um, maintaining, repairing, replacing that item or those items, um, coordinating and using other therapies or intervention services with assistive technology devices. So you don't want to have uh, something that they only take out when they're in one class. It should be something that's um, implemented throughout their day. Uh, training is huge. So training or technical assistance for the child or the family of the child, and then also for those professionals that um, interact with the child on a daily basis. So, and then there's the ad code there. So um, that's it for today. If you wouldn't mind filling out our survey monkey, it will help us. There will be questions that probably won't apply, a couple of questions. And if you just mark NA, that's great. Uh, Liz has put the link in the chat so it's easier to access. And then again, Liz will be sending out copies of uh, this whole presentation. All the links will be clickable. And if you have questions on any of our services or specifics, 
uh, specific technologies, please feel free to reach out to us. Email is the best way to reach us because we're still working from home, um, but uh, please feel free. And then um, any questions? If you have questions, go ahead and type them in the chat. If not, please feel free to uh, email us with specifics and we will help you out.